Hi everyone, my name is Ira Fay, and I'd like to share a game with you today that I played about a month ago against Vase, and it was a normal ladder game, but I'm about to start the playoffs for the 2021 league, which I actually ended up going undefeated in, and it's a top eight double elimination tournament, and I thought that it would be useful to be thinking about War of the Ring and, and just get my, my head in the game. I haven't had the chance to play very much at all. This was the most recent game that I played, and I certainly haven't had a lot of time to do videos, but it seemed like today was a good day to do it. I got a really nice message on Discord from uh, Strider656, so uh, shout out to, to Strider. Thanks for the kind words. This video was inspired by you because I thought, you know what, let's do another video. So here we go. Uh, I am playing free and my opponent is obviously shadow. We are using two action tokens and I think that balances the base game pretty well. So I'm happy with uh, Kindred of Glorfindel and Horde of Gondor. These are fine cards, not, you know, the best cards ever, but cer certainly fine. And two playable cards for, for Gandalf. And Shadow started with New Powers Rising. Obviously, that's a great, great start. So you can see our rolls. Shadow allocated one eye, rolled a bunch of musters. This is, these are good rolls for both of us. So pretty standard initial turn. My opponent gets Isengard to war and... I move once safely, and then my opponent gets Sauron to war. I move a second time again safe. That's pretty nice against two eyes, so I'm feeling happy with that start. And then my opponent gets Saruman, all reasonable here. And then I decide to move a third time. You know, the hunt has been going well so far. Sure, I'm, I, you know, I have a, I think I calculated a 42% chance of getting revealed right here, and it's never fun to get revealed into Moria, but I've had three good movements. Is there anything else I would really love to do with that Horn of Gondor? I mean, with that character die, I mean, maybe play Horn of Gondor, but given the hunt has started well, I'm willing to take a little bit of corruption. My opponent already has Saruman, so if I roll a Will of the West, I could get Gandalf next round, and turn two Gandalf is pretty nice, so I'm willing to take the risk. As it turns out, I do get hit, but my opponent doesn't reveal me, so for one corruption, I just decide to take it. You can think if you would lose Gandalf there. My thinking is... I'm not in that much of a rush. I got a good start. It doesn't seem worth it. If I had a Will of the West showing, I would definitely lose Gandalf here, I think, to a one. But I don't have a Will of the West, so it doesn't seem worth it to me just for a one. And then my opponent draws a strategy card here. You know, I think that's fine. I also think New Power of Rising, New Power is Rising is so good. I would also consider playing it and just, you know, marching with Isengard pretty early on, trying to take out Rohan early. But this is this is very reasonable too. Corsairs of Umbar, great early card. Seems like you should be able to get Dol Amroth under siege pretty early. So that could be great for Shadow. These are two strong cards to draw. I go ahead and muster elves. Now, you know, all things being equal, I figure as free people, it's good to muster elves. There are a lot of victory points. They're good targets for Shadow, so it's nice to be able to defend them. And I think that um, Cairden Ships, you know, for free people, is a good option to, to, to activate. Now, I don't have it. Maybe I'm going to draw it. Maybe I won't. But it sort of keeps my options open. And I really don't want Shadow to be able to put two Elven Strongholds under siege without me mustering in at least one of them. Okay, so that's why I muster Elves. I could have played Kindred of Glorfindel, but I feel like I'm probably going to roll Palantirs next round, and then I can cycle the card then. But the only way to advance Elves towards war is with actually using a muster or the token. I don't know. Maybe it'd be worth playing Kindred of Glorfindel. I don't think that Rivendell is very often a target and because the elven um, re reinforcement pool is relatively small I'm reluctant to muster too much in Rivendell without actually the need to do it so I I'm just a little cautious on playing this early if I don't if I don't really feel like I need to so that's why I decided to muster the elves it's there's a reasonable argument for saying just just play this card now cycle a strike a, a strategy card um, 
yeah, curious to know what you would have done there. Would you have would you have played Kindred of Glorfindel with the muster, or would you have um, mustered the Elves Tor or someone else? Okay, so Shadow starts marching north. Obviously, I'm not happy to see that because you know Woodland Realm, but what can I do? And this is interesting. Shadow moves into Gorgoroth. You know, given that I have as Shadow Corsairs of Umbar, I would be inclined to move Far Harad to Near Harad and Near Harad to Umbar so that I can set up this attack into Dual Amroth sooner rather than later, ideally before the elves are at war in case they have Kyrgyz ships or in case Shadow, uh, in case Free People has drawn into Immerhill of Dual Amroth. So I would I would feel a little bit inclined to make that initial movement instead of the Bared Dur to Gorgoroth, given the card, given the fact that I already have Corsairs of Umbar. Okay. Um, all right. So next round, obviously nice to see cruel, re- cruel weather as shadow. The shadows on misty mountains is a great initial mustering card. So shadow has some good muster options here. Um, we'll see, we'll see what comes of it, but obviously shadows on misty mountains is often played in Moria and then it allows an attack onto Lorien. I happen to draw Kyrdan ships early and challenger the King. So getting Kyrdan ships this early is, you know, quite useful. If the elves are at war, I'm feeling good about that muster. I'm feeling fine that these armies are now going up to Woodland Realm because at least I'll be able to defend Dol Amroth if Shadow happens to draw um, Corsairs of Umbar, which they did. So, you know, I'm feeling fine about that. Shadow has to allocate one eye, rolls three more, and I get a bunch of Palantirs here. So... You know, I think clearly this um, character die is going to be used to move. And then what else am I going to do? Um, maybe it makes sense here to play play some character cards or, or, or um, maybe Kindred of Glorfindel to cycle, cycle some cards. Let's see what I choose to do. Yeah, so I think it makes sense to do this before moving in case I get hit because that way I get the benefit of Gandalf's Palantir ability. So I get to cycle two cards. I get to draw two strategy cards here. Help unlock for Wisdom of Elrond. So this Wisdom of Elrond is interesting because now I can get I can get the elves to war relatively easily and even have a muster available for it. The problem is because I have an action token. So I have one action token muster, wisdom of Elrond, muster with the Palantir, and then I and then the elves are at war, and I can actually use this muster to get a, an elite into Woodland Realm. The problem is Shadow is moving too quickly. So Shadow is going to be able to put it under siege before I can do that plan. And um, you know, that's just how it goes sometimes. Shadow did a nice job getting getting this army up there, even if it can't initially, yeah, I don't know. This isn't a giant army, but I think it's going to be enough to take out this little, little bitty army. All right. I, uh, so shadow musters, they play new powers rising here and you know, that's fine. I don't have army musters. I think if I had army musters, I might be more inclined to, to get this army to old forest road, but I think their plan is to use, um, is to use this army muster to do army movements and consolidate this um, South Dunland army into North Dunland. One question I have is maybe it makes sense to get the elves to war. Can I do that? I guess I can't as shadow. I have one movement, one attack. Oh yeah, no, they could. So I don't know. It might be worth getting the witch king here. You can move armies with the character die. You can attack Woodland Realm with the character die. Now elves are one away from war. You can attack again in Woodland Realm with this army muster, putting the elves to war, and then you can use this muster to get the Witch King. So it would have been possible to get the Witch King this round. Now, I I think actually the way that Shadow decided to play it I think makes a lot of sense because what they ended up doing, so they get new powers rising. So, so note they could have gotten Witch King this round, but they're not doing that by, by playing this uh, card with that mustard. They know they're not going to be able to get the Witch King this round unless uh, I muster the elves, but I'm not going to make it easier on them right now. And that's, I think why that's why I didn't play wisdom of Elrond with this Palantir 
Because if I had mustered the elves one away from war, then they still could have moved into, Shadow could have moved into Old Forest Road with the character die, attacked with the other character die, and then gotten Witch King this round. And so that's why I didn't, I didn't want to, I didn't want to facilitate Shadow getting the Witch King, so I played Horde of Gondor. I'm happy to cycle a character card as well, happy to get a little corruption buffer, you know, that's fine. All right, so I drew an Ent card, fine. And now uh, Shadow combine some armies and i think this is this is really nice south dunland to north dunland north dunland to moria we know that shadow has shadows on misty mountain coming that's going to be a, a really nice army efficiently played i think that was that was really well done all right so the north activates that's fine i move and i'm safe you know, when you only move once a turn, even with a bunch of eyes, it's, it's you know, even not that great a chance. I think this is pretty close to 50-50 chance. I don't remember the numbers off the top of my head. Okay. Uh, Shadow moves armies from Gorgoroth to Moranon. Yeah, I mean, what else can you do? I guess they don't want to put elves one away from war with their, with their last die. It's a little sad. I don't know. Maybe, maybe you play on, on they went. What is this army going to do? I guess it's going, I guess it's heading up north to support this, or maybe it's coming, maybe it's coming to Minister. I don't know. What do you do with Shadow with these character dice? Maybe you move Nazgul? Like you're going to eventually attack Woodland Realm and you'll probably want to have more Nazgul there. If you if you move Nazgul right here, you could beef up the army in Old Forest Road. You could also put a Nazgul in North Dunland so that you can then do a character movement to get into Moria. I don't know. It's a little tricky. These, these are not ideal dice for this situation. If, Shadow, if uh, I had caught the Fellowship, then I certainly could have put a Nazgul on the Fellowship, but it didn't happen. Okay, so I muster the Elves again with my die. And the reason why I do that here is because if Shadow does not then use this character die to put Woodland Realm under siege, I can use my action token to get the elves all the way to the to war at the end of the turn and then at the beginning of next turn i can muster into woodland realm so i'm sort of threatening that i might use my token the rules are the round does not end until um, both players pass in a row so even though i don't have any dice i can use my action token and um i previously ha had that rule wrong several months ago i had that rule wrong so just to be clear even if you don't have any dice, you could use one action token. All right, so Shadow does just continues to march this army along. Okay, you know, I, I guess it makes sense to to maybe not put the elves to war. It will give Lorien quite a lot of time. I I kind of like getting the elves to war here so that you get to besiege Woodland Realm without any extra units in it. Um, how important is it to get this army moving? I don't know. Okay, so I do go ahead and do that and um, get the elves to war, and then we go to the next round. So, you know, I'm reasonably happy with this situation. I have four movement, and I'm going to be able to, hopefully, if I roll a muster, get an extra elite into Woodland Realm. I'm always happy when I get to defend that at least a little bit. Shadow allocates one, rolls two more, and... Let's see what I roll. Okay, Faramir's Rangers. We do it slightly out of order, and um, because Shadow had already rolled, but I hadn't drawn my cards and I needed to discard, it could make some difference with the discard, and so I gave Shadow the option of re-rolling if they wanted to or keeping their, their roll, but it was up to them to decide. That feels reasonably fair to me. This was just a ladder game. I think in a tournament, it would be appropriate to contact a judge, just to be sure, but... <coughs> that's what we did here okay so um shadow just kept their rolls fine i got a very nice roll a will of the west and a um 
and an army muster, so I get to muster into Woodland Realm, and now at this point, Shadow goes ahead and puts that under siege. I'm not exactly sure why they leave this regular, I guess for the option of getting um, Shadow's Gather. So, just one second. Okay, so... I... Uh, I guess I pass here. I think that that's fine. And then Shadow continues to march their armies along. And at this point, I could play a card first before moving if I'm hoping to lose Gandalf. My thinking is if I move safely, I'll be at five movement. Plus I have We Prove the Swifter. And so I can separate... I can separate Strider and crown Aragorn and Minas Tirith this turn. If I lose, if I get hit, I can lose Gandalf and then I can bring Gandalf back this round. So I think that's why I'm waiting to spend this Palantir. I do risk not getting the benefit of Gandalf's card draw, but I think if I get hit here, then I'd rather, especially revealed, then I'd rather use the Will of the West to get Gandalf and the Palantir to hide using Strider's ability. So that's that's what I'm thinking here. And I have a handful of cards. I don't I, I don't feel super urgent with getting getting more cards. That's my thinking there. Now I do see that this army here um, is sort of marching toward Lorien. Because it does not currently have a Nazgul it is not obvious to me that it can attack Lorien. So I don't think this changes very much for me, but it is it is interesting um, because, okay, so I move, Shadow misses, and then they play Shadows on Misty Mountain. So now this army is really a great army to be able to attack Lorien, and I can see that, that Shadow can put, can put it under siege this round if they skip the Witch King. So would you at this point consider using this Will of the West to muster into Lorien in advance of this army? Or would you go ahead and get Strider here? Or maybe even use a ring to um, turn this Palantir into a character movement and then try moving again? If and then maybe Gandalf comes with with this will of the West. Um, I don't. I you know looking at this here, I don't know. Maybe, maybe it was better to. Yeah, I don't know. I think if I had if I had played the will of the West for a muster into Lorien, then. I think that Shadow would have gotten the Witch King. I guess I was kind of thinking that Shadow would get the Witch King. No matter what, even if I didn't muster into Lorien. Okay, in any case, I ended up playing We Prove the Swifter, and I sent Strider down to Minas Tirith. The other thing is I have Challenge of the King in my hand, and I don't know if this is really worth playing... Um, when there aren't when the the red eye tile isn't in the pool it does it really help that much um there has been one non eye tile drawn so you know i'm thinking i'm certainly thinking about the possibility of challenge of the king it feels it feels pleasant to be able to play that i also have faramir's rangers so like i can get some some mustering going down here in gondor i decide to bring Legolas with me now in retrospect I don't know what I was thinking I, I like I didn't bring Boromir because of Horn of Gondor and I didn't want to lose that um, I felt like things with the fellowship were going really well so might as well try and balance military I no, nothing is happening in Gondor like why well, I don't know why I needed to bring Legolas there um Maybe I'm thinking Legolas is going to end up going somewhere else, going to Fangorn. I, I don't know. The whole the whole thing does not make a lot of sense to me when I watch it again here. Um, so I think that was probably a mistake to take Legolas out. It just doesn't help that much. Okay, 
So I do get to draw an extra card. File of Galadriel, awesome card. Very nice, worth uh, quite a few negative, uh, quite, quite a few healing if you get it in at the beginning before climbing up Mortar. All right, so Shadow brings their army to Dimmerald Dale. And then, you know, I could muster into Lorien, but I really want to get my fifth die. And I see that if Shadow wants to besiege Lorien, they're going to have to give up the Witch King this round. So I think to myself, ah, that's probably okay. I don't know. I I don't know. M maybe a better plan around all of this was just don't, don't separate Strider and use that Will of the West to muster into Lorien. Okay. Anyway, I did what I did. That's that's how it goes. You got to make choices. So um, Shadow attacks Lorien. I, I think this is the right choice. I think this is actually, you know, upon reflection, this makes a lot of sense. You don't want to let, you don't want to let um, the free people get another elite in there. And it's, you know, the cost of one die, but, but that's a good die to spend. All right, so we go to next round. I have to discard two cards. I th I decide. I think I decide to discard Ents and maybe uh, Gray Company. I guess I don't know, or maybe Spirit of Mordor. I don't know what I discard here. Ents and Wisdom of Elrond. Yeah, Wisdom of Elrond. I guess I don't really need. It's a little weird. Um, I wouldn't mind mustering Gondor in advance of um potential. Corsairs, um, I, yeah, it makes sense to keep Spirit of Mordor. It's useful to have scouts. Um, Gray Company, yeah, you know, I do have Aragorn here. Okay, so um, I think about declaring, but uh, to avoid like Balrog, um, I think I say... Yes, because I'm I'm worried about Balrog and I don't know. I guess I just didn't want the extra tile from Moria because eventually you're going to get revealed. It does put me, you know, at risk of the various tile drawing cards. All right. So this is a crazy roll. Shadow just rolled no musters. The Witch King is ready to show up. And Shadow rolled no musters on seven dice. Like, that is unlikely. I don't know exactly what the odds are, but that is very unlikely. So the Witch King gets delayed a whole round because they didn't roll a single muster. Uh, on the other hand, I get very nice movement to character dice and, and musters. So this is fine for me. I move and um, get hit on a six, and I decide to lose the Horn of Gondor. Um, I guess my thinking there is, yes, foul thing is still out, but I want to be able to start taking random companions, I guess. It's a little weird that I didn't just take a one there because, oh, I think I know why. I think because, um, so many of the ones had already been taken out that the odds of foul thing hitting another one is pretty low. So I thought better to spend it now and then I can continue to take random companions. If I get a two or something like that or a one in the future, then I can take a I can take a random companion and not risk losing Boromir while the Horn of Gondor is still in play. All right. Shadow puts a Nazgul on. And so this is, you know, this is the uh, drawback of, of bringing out the fellowship. I avoided uh, it's extra tile from Moria, but maybe I'm getting extra tiles because a Nazgul is now on me. Um, it also enables stuff like Nazgul strike and Nazgul search and stuff like that. So, you know, maybe unwise. Um, it's just eventually odds are pretty good that you're going to get revealed um, at some point. So that's, that's why I went for it. Um, okay, go ahead and start mustering Gondor because I want to get them to war in advance of Corsairs. I do have Cairdens, so I'm not particularly worried, but um, it's nice to get them. All right, Stormcrow, you know, I think that's fine. What else are you going to do with those with those um, Palantirs? So, this, you know, on on they went, it's going to get played. You know, if Corsairs, this is, this is exactly the situation. If Corsairs were ready... Um, and maybe they are going to get ready in time. So that could, that could be good. 
on on they went gets played and what's happening all right so attacking Lorien here I, what are you going to do with your palantir dice why not army movement to southern rovanian and um, near harad and then another army movement to s northern rovanian and then umbar and then you can use a palantir blade corsairs of umbar oh right they're not at war right right silly ira yeah, so if you don't roll musters, then Corsairs of Umbar, not as good. Okay, so, yep, clearly um, makes sense to attack Lorien. This makes total sense. And there are some, some casualties. Uh, what gets played? No combat cards or relatively few combat cards. And, you know, pretty standard stuff. I decided to, so there was a chance right here just to call it out. I was down to one regular in the um, reinforcement pool and I think zero regulars in the casualties. And I had a choice to either reduce one of my elites or just, um, and then have th um, three regulars but no elites or to just kill an elite entirely. I decided to kill an elite entirely because... Um, I didn't, I would, it would have left me with zero regulars in the pool or in the, um, or in reinforcements. So you have to be a little bit of care, a little bit careful of that with elves. I don't know if that's exactly right, but that's what I did. All right. So more attacks into Lorien and, uh, those elves are doing a good job defending themselves. I go ahead and get Gondor all the way to war so I can start mustering into Dol Amroth. I guess maybe I'm thinking about military victory, keeping that option open. Um, and then I move once here. And by once, I mean move for the second time this round. Um, I get missed by that Nazgul. And Shadow gets to play more red tiles. And here we go next round obviously i'm going to declare the fellowship because i get out from under that nazgul and um one eye and again no musters so that was 14 dice rolled by shadow no musters this is really bad luck to still not have the witch king um yeah really kind of crazy all right i get a beautiful roll um you know it's just really nice and i drew wizard staff so you know everything is going right for me here um what would you do here with wizard, wizard staff you have a will of the west and that's nice if you kill off gandalf to be able to get gandalf this round um but would you play wizard staff first and then move twice, possibly getting Gandalf this round? Um, so what I ended up doing was moving once and then hopefully not getting revealed and then maybe using the wizard staff to, to make my last move into um, Mordor. And, and that's the one that I would use wizard staff on. So I just move straight away. It's also nice to move before an Osgol gets on you. So, you know, that's good. But I get hit and then there's this two reveal. So <clears throat> what do you do with a two reveal? Here's the hunt pool. There are more threes in there. Do you lose Gandalf here? Do you now want to play wizard staff now that you've gotten hit. Um, what do you do? So what I did was take a random companion because my thinking was if I lose Gandalf, okay, I lose Gandalf and I will um, get to bring him in with the will of the West, but anybody else, I will um, get to play wizard staff. And I think, I think that I just, probably should have played wizard staff outright but 
you know, I was thinking, ah, it's nice to get Gandalf. I think, I think the, the flaw here is if Shadow Military is going slowly, and it certainly is because there's no Witch King for two rounds and South Rounds and Easterlings aren't at war, um, then you have time and that extra die from Gandalf isn't quite as important um, as just playing it safe and um, not taking too much corruption. And so I think to that end, it probably would have made sense, would have been better to play Wizard Staff and say to myself, you know what, it's fine. You won't get Gandalf this round. You still have five dice. You're going to avoid some corruption. That's that's a, a good use of your dice and you're not in so much of a rush. So, okay. But I get revealed. Gandalf was my random companion loss. And I think to myself, okay, fine. I'll get the, you know, I'll get the uh, Gandalf this round. It's fine. Uh, Shadow plays Breaking the Fellowship. Obviously very nice when all three, all three threes are in the pool. If you draw a three and both hobbits are in the pool, this can actually do four damage. So... You know, it, you know, I felt like the fellowship was really quite healthy and there just wasn't very much damage done. But now all of a sudden, if a three gets drawn, I lose four corruption. I'm at one corruption with with, you know, one companion. Um, so this is a little this is a little nerve wracking. And I think that like it just goes to show you how close I was already um, taking Legolas out, not bothering to play wizard staff. Okay, but my opponent draws an eye. So, you know, again, good luck for me on the hunt. And I go ahead and hide. And then um, where is this battle? This is in Lorien. And my opponent doesn't get any hits. I go ahead and use do some army movements to get the Westamnet army ready. And um, We Come to Kill is obviously good. Uh, sorry, not we come to kill the half orcs and goblin men reinforcing in Lorien, so that's great. And then I play Gray Company here. Why? I don't know. Um, I guess I want to be prepared for um, combat that's forthcoming, and I want to try and cycle into um, the like uh, Thranduil's archers or um, Celeborn's Galadrim to be able to reinforce here. I, I guess that makes sense. Um, you know, it does seem like Shadow is going to be doing some combat. So that's fine. Maybe File of Galadriel instead. I, I think it's right not to rush. I don't really need to move here. Um, you know, though I could. Um And in fact, yeah, as I'm looking at this more, this is actually, this is actually quite, quite bad. Ah, I don't know how bad it is, but if I'm one step away from Mordor next round, so if I had used this character die to move, then either I get revealed or at the start of next round I can declare, but I'll be one I'll be one step away from Mordor. Because I have an action token, I can go last next round and then I can avoid cruel weather. I will be at risk if I wait until my last die to move, I will be at risk of um, getting stalled by um, Orc Patrol, Isildur's Bane, or Foul Thing from the Deep, and there are all three of those in the deck, but that has a only um, four out of, what is that, 11 chance, four out of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, uh, four out of 12 chance, one third chance of stalling me, and Cruel Weather has a guaranteed chance of stalling me. So, and my opponent has only drawn six and by then maybe seven character cards. And so I guess I'm thinking odds of them having cruel weather are lower than the odds of them having one of the tile drawing cards. So I'd rather bank, I'd rather bank on, on them not having cruel weather. So, 
Okay, so I guess that's my thinking. I'll I'll wait until next round. Then again, still probably better to move here. I don't know. Okay, that's that's an interesting question. Would you would you play Great Company or would you move here? All right, I do get Thrandall's Archers, so you know there was some tangible benefits of that, and um, my opponent attacks into Lorien and um, then attacks again into Lorien. Or I guess I guess presses doesn't quite manage to do it. I um, get Gandalf and I decide, you know what? I just drew into Thrandall's archers. Why don't I reinforce Woodland Realm? I bet that's going to help Woodland Realm survive. So I go ahead and decide to put Gandalf in Woodland Realm. And I'm not too worried about Ents. I don't have Ents in my hand. And if I draw some later, I can move Aragorn to Fangorn. And that sometimes can surprise um, Shadow. So... And I'm holding on to these scouts to make sure that these guys out of Fords of Ising can retreat into Helm's Deep. All right, so um, Lorien finally falls, and then Shadow moves some armies around. And finally is starting to get these armies collected in near Harad. All right, so next round, my opponent gets uh, Day Without Dawn, and... I go ahead and get rid of House of Stewards. That makes sense. And finally, my opponent gets some musters. And this is just a beautiful roll. Super flexible. I can do everything that I want to do. All right. I start um, start by playing Thrandall's Archers. I know I want to. And Gandalf is there. This is, this is going to be good. Redraw into Path of the Woeses. That's fine. And then I go ahead and get moving with the fellowship. They move once safely. Um, they move a second time safely. So this has just been a pretty easy run for the fellowship. Um, and then at this point, I spend this Will of the West to play file because I know that I want to. But if I had been thinking ahead a little bit more, maybe I would have saved that because... I'm going to use um, the uh, card drawing card, the card drawing token, so that I can go last this round to see if my opponent did have um, Cruel Weather. So if they do, then I want to be able to still get in this round, I think. Um, that's, that's what I'm thinking right now. Then again, maybe I should say to myself, don't worry about getting in this round. You're not in so much of a rush. It's fine. Um, but I think that if I had um, if I had known that my opponent was going to um, play Cruel Weather, maybe I wanted to save this and use, use the Will of the West um, to just do my last movement instead of having to use a ring. What could I have played instead? I want to draw a card. There's not that much useful that I can do. None of these are playable, but I do. But I have this mostly useless wizard staff. I mean, I can use it in this battle in Woodland Realm, so it's it's not a bad combat effect actually. Um, I guess I could play Kirtan's ships. I feel like I'm gonna muster up Gondor, so I'm not too worried about playing Kirtan's ships right now. Yeah, I don't know. All right, I play Vile of Gladro. So be it. And then ring wraiths are abroad, so that's good. And now I muster in Dol Amroth. So again, this was, I think this was a little bit of a mistake. I should have mustered in Dol Amroth seeing that the Corsairs are coming. You know, I didn't, there wasn't a tempo reason to play File of Galadriel um, right then. I mean, I do hope that I'm getting into Mordor, but I could play it at the start of the next round if I have to. Um, it would have been better to muster once into Dol Amroth and then maybe a second time into Dol Amroth instead of I only get one muster in there. And then on top of that, I muster this elite in here, but um, I have enough regulars, Elven um, regulars, I think, that I could have, when I play Keratin Ships, um, gotten, I, I could have used up the entire Elven pool in, in Dol Amroth and then I could have gotten a leader here. So, I don't know. It's a slight, I think it's a slight misplay there. All right. So, 
um, Dol Amroth comes under siege, and then I use my use my card to draw a strategy card. I don't know exactly why I'm drawing a strategy card. I guess I want to draw into Dane Ironfoot's guard or Immerhill of Dol Amroth, something like that. And either way, I'm temporizing to see if my opponent has Cruel Weather, which they do. So at this point, I'm going to spend my ring. If I had done it a little differently, I could have had a, a beefier force in Dol Amroth, and I wouldn't have to spend a ring here. But I would not. And on the on the, the flip side of that, I wouldn't have played File of Galadriel. All right. So I move, and then this time I get caught. Obviously, that's fair. And I get revealed, and then a three gets drawn. So I just took four corruption there. Maybe it would have been better to just wait around. You know, how, how important was it? I gave a ring and I don't know. There's a little bit of tension. How, how, how many victory points is my opponent going to be able to get that quickly? I probably had time, but this could fall. That's two. Helm's Deep could certainly fall. That's two more. Woodland Realm could fall. That's two more. So, you know, that's that's eight, counting Lorien. And then we get Dale and Edoras, or Dale and Pilargear, right? Like, they're, they're not that far away. So, all right. Um, get into Mordor, but I'm revealed. My opponent has three, or two red tiles in there now. Um, these are, this is a, you know, beautiful roll good role for both of us my opponent is fairly limited on character but you know, character dice but does have a ring at this point uh use the will of the west first because day without dawn hasn't been played and i don't want to risk losing two wills of the west to day without dawn so whenever day without dawn hasn't been played yet usually it's and and all three shadow nations are at war usually it's best to play the will of the west um first Leaving one feels okay to me um, because, you know, they'll spend a Palantir, you'll lose a die. It's one-to-one. -one. Not great, but at least not horrible. Losing two Wills of the West to one Palantir, that's obviously, can be quite bad. All right, so I go ahead and hide the Fellowship, and then the Ring is Mine is played. So three Red Tiles in there. Not the best-looking Hunt Pool. Um, you know, I'm, I'm thinking, oh, man, if Gandalf had you know, prevented one of those tiles from being drawn. That'd be great if I had maybe just gone a little slower outside of Mordor. I don't know. Okay, so... Um, moving armies around, and then I go ahead and reinforce Dol Amroth. And... Shadow's just getting ready. I start drawing character cards now. I don't know why I was drawing. Sh I, I haven't really made up my mind here. I'm drawing. I'm drawing character cards here. I guess I, I didn't feel happy about what happened getting into Mordor. You know, starting Mordor at basically negative one corruption. If I have two hobbits and Gimli, that's you know four corruption, and I'm at three. Like negative one is not great. It's not as good given how well the hunt went for me all along. I feel like I should have been able to make it in with a, a, a safer fellowship. Obviously, leaving Legolas in there would have been better. Playing Wizard Staff would have been better. Okay. So Gandalf is shining in Woodland Realm. He's doing what I want him to do. And I get to play Wizard Staff for its combat effect. Um, and it does not, just for point of reference, Words of Power um, cancels the companion's leadership and special abilities, so the Nazgul get to roll. But... Wizard Staff says Gandalf is in the battle. So um, Words of Power does not prevent Servant of the Secret Fire, just as a minor rules quirk. Um, all right, so Shadow draws into Isildur's Bane, and I play through a day and a night here. I don't remember what happened to Challenge of the King. I guess I discarded that at some point. Um, I should have called that out because this is the moment, like right around now, that I'd be very happy to play Challenge of the King. 
you know, there's the red eye in there. And if you can cancel out the red eye, like that is so great. And I have five eyes to pick from the odds of getting all three eyes is still low. I don't know exactly what it is, but it's quite low to, to draw all three. Um, we could, we could figure it out real quick. Do we want to figure it out on? Yeah, let's figure it out. So one, two, three, four, five out of how many is here? 15. So the math there is, I'm going to get my phone out. Um, you have to draw, this is the chances we're calculating the chances of, uh, Aragorn dying to challenge the King five divided by 15. That's one eye on the first poll and then times four now there are four eyes left in the pool four divided by 14 because there are only four 14 tiles left times three divided by 13. that's a two percent chance so um you're still you're still really safe in in terms of risking aragorn and your chances of getting you know at least one eye should we figure out the chances of getting at least one eye no but it's it's pretty good um to, to figure to figure out chances of getting one eye, you're going to do um, the chances of getting zero eyes. And the chances of getting zero eyes is minus one. So um, the chance of getting zero eyes is going to be 10 divided by 15 times uh, 9 divided by 14 times 8 divided by 13. And that's going to be your chances of getting zero eyes. And then the inverse of that, or the one minus that, is going to be your chance of getting at least one. So... All right, now I'm curious. You convinced me. Let's calculate it. So this is the chances of getting zero eyes with Challenge of the King. 10 divided by 15 times 9 divided by 14 times 8 divided by 13. 26% chance of getting zero eyes, which means 74% chance of getting one or more. So you can feel pretty good about that. Hey, what are the chances of grabbing the red eye? Let's figure out the chance. <laughs> this is going to be the last one, I promise. Uh, 14 divided by 15. So we missed it once. And we get to try again. 13. No, no. 14 divided by 15. That's the chances of missing it on the first time. Times 13 divided by 14. That's the chance of missing it on the second poll. Times... Uh, 12 divided by 13, 20, uh, 80 percent chance of missing it, 20 percent chance of grabbing it. So, I don't know, I should do a whole video on Challenge of the King. Um, I think it's a really interesting card, but 20 percent chance of grabbing the red eye and a 76 percent chance of getting at least one eye. I think it really is probably worth it in Mordor. This is exactly the situation. Unfortunately, I discarded it. So that was a whole long, and I had a whole plan from the beginning of the game to get it. So, all right, this was a long digression on Challenge of the King that I didn't even have in my hand right now. But um, I was thinking about it early, and then it didn't end up happening. Okay, I think at the time I discarded it, the, um, the Ring is Mine had not been played yet, I believe. All right, combat. We're in Woodland Realm, and um, Woodland Realm goes down pretty low. I think about attacking out into the Witch King, but um, I don't think it's worth bothering. And I'm just going to stay holed up with Gandalf and go ahead and draw some cards and then move. So start off Mordor very pleasantly, Filed Galadriel. Um, you know, that's making me feel quite good. And four steps to go with only one uh, with negative three corruption is much better. And I have Athlos in hand too. So um, feeling better now. All right. I go ahead and move a second time and this time get an eye. Okay. Um, three, three damage and revealed. And then my opponent moves some armies. Okay. On to next round. My opponent's finally rolling um, 10 dice gets one extra eye, and I have this amazing roll, um, three Wills of the West, but um, a little scared of Day Without Dawn. So um, I go ahead and hide with the Fellowship right away. I have two Wills of the West at risk. Um, it is legal 
to spend an elven ring to change a will of the west to a different facing but then not spend it right away and then spend a different die so you can do that um it did not seem worth it to me in this case obviously i'm hoping my opponent doesn't have day without dawn but that is a little quirk of the rule that you could use if you want to um all right my opponent does have day without dawn <laughs> they say they say they were almost didn't want to use it i like I, why would you not want to use it it's awesome to get to get rid of two wills of the west for one die um so i play elven rope i'm not in so much of a rush i want to make sure the hunt pool is as pleasant as i can make it my opponent starts to continues up in uh do and um i get a red three tile so you know they had quite a few red tiles in there i think it's fair that i drew one um a golem is now in play and i don't reveal because there are plenty of other morgul wound i think is still out there um the um lure of the ring is still out there which would do one corruption so i'm thinking you know what i can just stay hidden there's no reason to try and save it and there's a chance when i play athalos that i could heal three you know theoretically so um better to be at three corruption just on the off chance i roll really well okay my opponent um is continuing to try and whittle down uh gandalf and um gandalf was standing up pretty well but then there are these dreadful spells and there are three hits um additional attacks uh, moving nazgul around and then um i play mirror of gladriel heroic death prepared to lose gandalf here just making the last stand in woodland realm but they they only get one hit and so the elven leader goes away um but then there's an additional attack and that finally gets gandalf so you know i'm obviously not happy to lose a die but i think investing gandalf up in woodland realm was um was probably worth it i think it it really took a lot of extra resources from shadow and bought bought the fellowship quite a lot of extra time so um I move again this round and get a second red tile. So two red tiles in one round can be a little demoralizing. Um, I started the round, you know, hidden with, you know, three companions. And now I'm revealed and have a bunch more corruption. Um, and I will say, you know, it, it still feels fair to me because I drew a file of Galadriel right off the beginning. So, you know, it's, it's okay. Um, and I still have enough time militarily. Things are going okay. All right, so Erebor gets besieged. And I draw the other zero, Elven Cloaks. And my opponent rolls one extra eye. I go ahead and hide right away. And um, my opponent draws character cards here. And um, plays Elven, or I play Elven Cloaks. And uh the witch king attacks dale i go ahead and retreat because with scouts because why not i can maybe theoretically threaten some military victories or recapture something i don't know my opponent leaves two regulars behind that seems about right and then i move and get a three so um i don't know if it's worth revealing here um the hunt pool has some eyes in it um but I don't have any more character actions. And I mean, I guess I could use a ring to hide. Um, maybe it's worth it to save the save the corruption here. Um, but I don't. I just take I just take the full three. Um, let's see. My opponent cycles cards, attacking into Erebor, and um with a very nice onslaught manages to take out the dwarves so that could have gone quite differently but you know they they had good leadership they had a good army there i think i think that's fair they play she loves lair now all four red tiles are in and um move nazgul around i move armies i guess because what else can i do i go to osgiliath to start to threaten something i don't know i guess i want to be able to, to prepare to defend pilar gear um my opponent plays isildur's bane and gets an eye obviously that's good luck for me 
Um, and maybe that was an argument to reveal when I had the chance, um, knowing that Isildur's Bane was still out, because getting up to three corruption there would have been pretty scary. All right, and then I go ahead and use a ring to move again. I think that makes sense. Reasonable to save it for the end. Um, get another three, and I don't reveal here. I don't understand why not. I guess I'm afraid of Morgul Wound. Um, as long as my opponent rolls um, two or fewer eyes. No, I think it makes sense to reveal here um, with Gollum. You know, maybe my opponent has a card that punishes me for it, but next round I can hide and continue along. So, um, the other thing that's, that could be good next round is if I start hidden and I, for some reason, don't want to destroy the ring or try and destroy the ring next round by starting hidden, I can just spend my turn hiding and then I don't take corruption on Mount Doom. So, you know, it looks like shadow military is probably enough to finish it off next round. But in case they roll like five eyes and I just want to wait around, I can just hide. So probably should have revealed there. Don't know why I didn't. And then my opponent attacks Dol Amroth and manages to... Uh, what happens in this battle? Deadly Strife, finish it off. So they finish it off in one attack. Obviously, that's good. They're up to nine points. So it's going to be pretty hard, I think, for me to... Um, you know, stop them from winning, like Pilar gear will be, you know, maybe I can hold Pilar gear, but uh, it's going to be tough to hold Edoras while also still holding Helm's Deep. So, I mean, maybe if they roll really few attacks, then maybe they won't be able to get to Edoras, but seems seems pretty likely they're going to be able to get to 10 victory points this time. Um, and I got a nice roll. So this is good. I can use, I don't have to use my Will of the West right away because I know they have already played Day Without Dawn. Um, and I start off by playing Athelas. The reason why I play it with a character die and not a Palantir is because I want to draw more character cards. So that's why I'm saving the Will of the West and the Palantir to draw. And um, I know that realistically, if I don't destroy it this round, I'm I'm lost. It's uh, the 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 Shelob on a one. Um, or I guess a two would let me um, would let me try to destroy the ring again and would leave the game uncertain. But statistically, I think the chances of a one or a two on Shelob are not worth the benefit, and I'd rather just draw two cards instead of only one card. So that's that's what my my thinking is. So I play Andril. Obviously, it would have been great to heal um, two points of damage, and then these well, these two eye tiles become winning tiles instead of losing tiles. So right now in the pool, I have one, two, three, four losing tiles. If I had revealed with Gollum a little bit more, these eyes would have been winning tiles instead of losing tiles. Um, probably. It may be the case that Shadow would have punished me for it with Morgul Wound um, or Lore of, the, Lore of the Ring. So may, maybe not. I don't know. Um, okay, so Shadow moves armies around. I draw a card, get theirs another way. That's nice. I love that card, but being at three corruption doesn't really matter. It doesn't it doesn't help. Um I mean, I guess if if she lobbed something or other, but it it's it's just it's not gonna matter. Um I decide to my you know, uh Shadow is coming in and attacking Fords of Eisen, that makes sense. Um I decide to draw again because I'm hoping to draw Bilbo's song, which I could play with this character die and then move, which would turn um, again these into good good dice, uh, good tiles instead of bad tiles, or uh, Mithril Coat and Sting, which would be huge and would vastly increase my chances of of winning the game. Um, so that's what I'm that's what I'm looking for, but I don't get it. Um, and I was weighing that, you know, chances of drawing a good card, which, you know, I had, there were only nine character cards left. Two out of nine of them were particularly good, Bilbo Song and Mithril Coat and Sting, um, versus the chances of drawing Shelob 
uh, rolling a one or a two, hiding, and then moving again this round. That That's the cost of this card draw. And I think the chances of drawing a good card are much better than the chances of drawing Shelob and rolling really low such that it actually mattered that I had three dice. All right, so uh, Helm's Deep gets attacked. That's fine. I don't know, like, aren't you going after Adoras? Why are you bothering with Helm's Deep? But whatever. Um, I just go ahead and move because I think it was late and um, it didn't matter. And I also didn't even bother playing There's Another Way because um, the only time that would actually matter is if Shelob is rolled and it's a two or a three. Um, so I, it just, it doesn't matter. Um, I'm either going to destroy the ring now or uh, Shadow should be able to get Edoras and win the game this round. Um, you know, if I, if it was a really serious game, I would just pass and pass and maybe my opponent would make a mistake. Um, or Helm's Deep wouldn't get attacked or, you know, or Edoras wouldn't get attacked. I don't know. But, um, in the interest of time, I just did it. Uh, the tile was Shelob and the rule was a six. So, um, so I ended up losing. Um, and, and I think that just, I, I'm, you know, obviously I wasn't happy to lose, um, but I think this is a really useful game to have analyzed because it, um, I, I made some misjudgments about the, the health of the fellowship and, you know, sure. It's not great to have drawn three red tiles in Mordor. That's going to be a rough Mordor run no matter what, but I had a lot of luck go my way early on with the hunt. Um, I had a lot of luck with, um, shadow not rolling musters for 14 dice and the witch king getting delayed i mean that's just ludicrously low chances of that happening and so um you know that cost i guess that only cost two dice and maybe a few cards and some leadership but you know um i i could have made i could have made the most of this um and i think if i had played wizard staff differently if i had um kept legolas in the fellowship i just would have had a few more a few more chances. So, um, I want to show you the, the, um, Mordor simula. Well, first let me show you the statistics. So let's just look at statistics on here. Um, so just to remember, these are reversed, I believe for, um, for the replay, this these dice results are combat dice are actually shadow, and these dice results are free people, and you can tell because just free people rolled fewer dice. Um, you know, I think pretty balanced uh, character rolls. Obviously, I had plenty of good movement. Um, pretty pretty balanced, I think. You know, these fives would matter a lot if you were free people, but for shadow, I don't think it actually helped shadow very much to be so high on fives. Um, okay. So now let me show you the hunt simulator. Um, I've, I've created, um, a hunt simulator, uh, irfa.com slash war of the ring, uh, W O T R underscore Mordor dot PHP. You can feel free to check it out. And I'll link it in the description. You can basically say what step you're on, how much damage eyes do, how many, how much damage you have to take before Gollum shows up, and um, basically, um, if you're going to use Gollum's ability, if you have Mithril Coat and Sting, what the existing hunt pool is. So this was the hunt pool that I basically used when I was going up um, Mordor in this in this game, and I'm including Shelob. And the zeros from the beginning, it's, you know, not exactly right. Eyes always do three damage. Shelob does four damage. So it's, you know, it's not an exact simulator, but it gives you a sense. So based on this, um, roughly, we would expect about eight character dice needed to be able to destroy the ring. In this case, in this game, I needed 10 character dice. And so it basically, the simulator counts, the simulator assumes that you start uh, hidden and then it counts one character die for every movement you make plus one for every time you're revealed other than the last step plus one for every stop 
So it's doing that sort of appropriate calculation. Normally you'd expect to need about eight character dice with this hunt pool on average. I needed 10. Um, you can see that's, you know, 90, 90th percentile, but um, I had the character dice. There was plenty of time. So the fact that I needed 10 character dice wasn't my downfall. Um, corruption inflicted, uh, the expectation would be around 11. Um, I actually took counting Shelob as a four instead of a six because the simulator counts Shelob as a four. Counting that um, and counting all the eyes as three, I actually took 15 corruption climbing up Mordor in that game only going four steps. So probably it would have been around, you know, like 17, we don't know, whatever the last step would have been. Um, so, you know, that was a very high amount of corruption that was inflicted. We're in the ballpark of, again, 90, 90th percentile of corruption being inflicted, but not like 99th percentile. Um, and I could have done more. I could have drawn more character cards. Again, wizard staff, um, kept Legolas in. There were, there were choices that I made. So, you know, I think that the lesson for me in this is um, when things go your way, you want to make sure you uh, take advantage of it by keeping your... Um, it, it's tricky. I, I don't want to say like always keep everybody in the fellowship and go really slowly. Like I, I did have to make a judgment about how fast Shadow Military was going. But I think in that case, I didn't I didn't accurately assess the speed of Shadow Military and I could have gone a little slower at certain points and kept a few more people in the fellowship. So that was the game. Hope you enjoyed it. Um, I will try and post more videos as I play the 2021 league playoffs, which are coming up in this month. And um, the tournament is starting in, in uh, late January or February 2022. And I'll try and um, include my videos for the tournament. Thanks so much. Have a good rest of the day.